Welcome to News Click. We have with us senior journalist Basra Singh, who's going to talk to us about the current political scenario and the role of media in a democracy. Welcome to News Click, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, you had written and you write a lot on the issues of the marginalized, the deprived, the minorities. Now, in this political scenario, how do you see the media space? Do you think it has changed from the previous years? I find that uh, it's moving very regressive way. Uh, it's not like this that it has happened all of a sudden just in one night or in just last four years or of the Modi regime. Uh, media was uh, not so helpful, not so responsive, not so sensitive to marginalize, issue of marginalized, be it farmer, be it uh, Dalit woman, Dalit uh, human rights, human rights in general, uh, rights of the Adivasis, or you say the communities which matter for this country, right. for whom the democracy is the most essential, most critical thing uh, for them. Yeah. So, but what happened in last four years, uh, that it has lost its spine mm. completely. So now we can't say even if you see uh, what has happened in Mumbai. Mm. I think it's one of the biggest news. It should be a one of the biggest news. Right. It can be covered as the scams which is happening in Maharashtra. Right. Why after so much of loan waiver announcement, the uh, farmers are uh, so much uh, in pain, why they are so much angry. Right. Uh, what is happening at the level uh, of the crops, why the farmers are throwing their crops, yeah. tomatoes, mm -hmm. beet, uh, uh, milk, water. everything. Sara kuch wo sadak pe fake rahe hain. Aur ye sab hume thodi thodi khabre mil rahi hain. But when we want to cover, we don't want to see them. Yeah. We are busy in discussing everything else in the world than the ground realities. Right. Because what the farmers are doing uh, right now is a political question. Correct. It's a challenging to the shining India which the Modi regime is trying to build. Yeah. With bringing the France at one go, with Israel with one go, moving to the international tour. Everything is that India has become a very big power. So one side is this picture, this perception, which has been built up by the help of the media. Right. And the other ground reality is entirely different, where the Dalits are, uh, are being burnt alive yeah. in Rajasthan, in Alwar. Two Dalits, yeah. immediately just, uh, it's not a matter that in mon one month is happening, it's just happening. So what I find that right now it's almost like undeclared, emergency. You talked about undeclared emergency. But in a democracy, media is seen as a fourth pillar. And we hear stories that during the emergency declared by Indira Gandhi's regime, the media played its role. Why do you think those ethics and its commitment to democracy is missing in, is, uh, uh, yeah. in these times? Yeah, that's a very important question, I think, uh, which is troubling to all of us. And if you see the media houses, the way they are operating, the way they have politically aligned with the ruling classes. I'm not saying ruling party. Yeah. They are aligned with the ruling party, but yeah. with the ruling class yes. also they have aligned. Right. The ownership of the media, Korn baithe hain jo malik hain. Sare malik raj sabha jana chahate hain. Republic TV ke ek vyakti ko abhi jaga mili. They have gone. Uh, Z is already on the roll. Right. If you just uh, have an analysis that how the corporate media is just the Godi media of Mr. Modi. Right. So when they at the level of the ownership, there is an alignment mm. with the ruling party, right. with the RSS. Yeah. Because what I found that just now, a uh, few days back, the RSS had a huge uh, program in Merit. Okay. The way it was covered in the Hindi media, I have never noticed, I'm a journalist from more than a two decades, okay. that you are running two pages, four pages. Each and every news is very important for you, what is happening, what uh, Bhagwat is saying. And you are not worried about anything else in the right. world which is happening. The farmers on the street, yeah. I'm saying leave about the Maharashtra. Yeah. The farmers are in streets, are in anger across the country. country. In Rajasthan they are. Yeah. In Madhya Pradesh, they have shown the anger. But the point is 
that right now the media and the independence of media is under huge, huge threat. It has not happened in the time of emergency also. Okay. The media is with you. Sometime it happens that Rajasthan Patrika, they made open announcement that unless and until uh, Rajay government take back that Adhyadesh ordinance, they will not publish anything about the government. That's a very brave step. I have not found any precedence from any uh, other uh, media house media. to show that kind of things. Okay. But rest of the media you will find that they are almost crawling to their masters. Media has a role for the marginalized. And if you see in the media spaces, there's no, I mean, coverage of the important news like you mentioned about, say, the atrocities on the Dalits, or even the lynchings of the Muslims, uh, Muslim minorities. So what do you think, I mean, is the way out? Because do you think that media has to have uh, guidelines and it has to follow those ethics? Or, I mean, it is, I mean, people say that, the argument is that it is a consumer product. Before it was an institution. Yeah. Now what the consumers want, we are giving it as a product. Do you see there yeah. is a change in the... So, but I find that this is a very interesting argument which has been built. That darshak wahi dekhna chahte hain. Yeah. Is liye hum dikha rahe hain. Yeah. If you remember, Bhut Pret ki kahani pehle aati thi. Ki yeah. yahaan par baba mile, wahaan wo khuni mode hai. Yeah. Is tarah ki. Yeah. All the sensational, this kind yeah. of sensational news was there. And it has been a long, that's what I'm saying, it's not, it has not happened this kind of a degeneration that Sambit Patra becomes an anchor. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't uh, happen uh, overnight. Right. So it has been a degeneration uh, like this. Finally, if the marginalized come out, suppose we talk about Dalits. There are two very important things which I want to uh, share with you. Chandrasekhar Raman is in jail, right. Saharanpur. Mm. Elections are there by-elections are yeah. happening. What, how the constituency is feeling, yeah. whether there is some resonance of the Chandrasekhar, because Bhim Army is not a small thing. Yes. It has its impact and it was a political challenge. That's yeah. why Yogi government planted whole his force to put behind Chandrasekhar even he got mm. the rail. Mm. But it should be a big news for the media. Correct. Why not? It has to be a big news yeah. for everyone. Yeah. But who is going to take that challenge? Because if you take, if you talk about Chanshekhar Ravan, he comes to the Delhi, later his comrades come to Delhi. Delhi. So if you show the, uh, them, you interview them, then politically you are giving a challenge to the right-wing thought process, which is dominating. Right. So that kind of courage, how many media groups have right now? Right. Secondly, uh, come to the issue of the manual scavenging comes to the severe deaths. Right. Now with the whole journey of the Safai Karamchari Andolan and rest of the friends who have been working for elimination of uh, manual scavenging in the country. What has happened that now there is a news. You can't ignore if any person dies in a sewer in the septic tank cleaning. Right. You have numbers also yeah. which media loves. Mm. That okay from January 2018 to one week or 10 days, eight people died, 10 people died. Right. These numbers, we are not collecting it. Yeah. As a media person, we are not collecting yeah. it. The people from the community, the organization from the community, they are collecting and they are giving to you. Yeah. It's a big news. It comes one day when the death is there. You tell me how much follow-ups are there. Okay. What has happened to that family? Whether the Supreme Court judgment is being implemented yeah. in the country, yeah. whether it should not be a concern for a democracy, in Vasant Kunj, yeah. uh, Chandan died two years before. Mm. What has, if you ask how many people know that Vasant Kunj, there was a septic tank, a person was killed inside, whether the government gave 10 lakhs or not, whether the woman got some compensation from the side of the government, Correct. and whether the culprits are being booked or not. Correct. No. This is not the, this how we treat uh, the issues of the marginalized. Right. So what I find that it's a very easy go that uh, when the marginalized come with full power, when there are blisters in the, uh, they, they can uh, show the blisters, there's a blood. One day a big photo shot, that also Times of India and the rest of the, uh, if you see the today's Times of India, they have just put in the brief, brief. with one photo. Okay. And through media, the perception is built across the country right. that, uh, France has come to us, we are hugging them hardly, 
and we are moving ahead so that's the scene which is uh, uh, right now happening and i think that this divide is widening the ground reality once the farmer comes to you then anyhow you have to consider because fadnavis has to address the issue right. so that much you can't ignore yeah. so that's the that where that's where i find that the democracy is vibrant okay. because the marginalized have not lost the hope that they can find the justice in this given structure they are still coming still struggling still making their voices and forcing you to uh, listen so there lies the ray of hope and i think that different alternative media houses social media everything has emerged and that's giving a vacuum also that's giving a space for us also that at least these issues can be raised that was my next question <laughs> okay. so how do you see uh, in this corporate media which is only catering to the business houses the profit or the capital is important but how do you see in this space social media is playing a major role through the internet so how do you see the role of social media actually being a conscience keeper of the uh, mainstream media do you think it has some role yeah i think uh, there only the uh, hope lies and uh, finally you will have maximum journalists who are concerned to the real ethos of democracy they are inclined toward these kind of social media networks or the websites which are running and a uh, huge uh, news uh, flood is also there in uh, you will have videos of atrocities you will have uh, videos of the whole movements also whatever the different voices are coming and i think this is a sign of relief for many of us but uh, what i find uh, the problem is that we should not feel very happy about it this is not a happy sign because if we feel that any person should go should have the internet to see all these uh, news which are there on the websites right. so we are also living in an illusion because this is almost a crowd of converted right. which comes to the some specific websites right. right now we can't expect that the person in the village should come to that website yeah. should see it can happen once in a while mm. but the perception is built on the daily basis the attack of fascism the attack of this big capital is on the daily basis yeah. and the newspaper is coming to you you are not going to newspaper, newspaper. the tv the tv channel is coming to you you are not going to the uh, tv channels yeah. but for the website the person has come to you yeah. for the whatsapp they have to come to you and there is a need of the uh, internet connection there is a need of that kind of a phone also and uh, majority of the marginalized and if you see the age bar also they can't be reached okay. so what i find that we have to push our agenda and we have to make this mainstream media also accountable through the pressures of the social media or these kind of websites because if it is a big news even in the brief times of india has to put correct even in the somehow that there was a chaos in the city they have to put that the farmers the workers have come to the city right so those both the things we should not leave them open that they you are okay whatever you want to do you do yeah. we have to keep them banging yeah. because uh, that's that's the space which we should try to capture only then the justice can be done otherwise we will build uh, an illusionary word that humne whatsapp pe itna message kar diya humne apni website pe itna message kar diya us pe bahut debate ho gaya uh, amisha ke bete ka aisa ho gaya mm. but then the march of the amisha and the jaisha will not be stopped uh, i mean coming with also the social media the challenge of fake news comes in so as a journalist in the mainstream media or in the traditional media was there a scope for fake news but uh, then we hear of planted news paid Pain news, news. Yeah. so how uh, so there was no fake news that was there but only planted news so yeah. how do you think what should be the corrective mechanism to control fake news in I social media i think ye bahut bada khatra hai it's mm. not a small uh, thing which we can 
because now whatever Pratik Sinha in Alt News mm -hmm. and rest of all the uh, people who are doing to just put a check and bring out, okay, this is not the video, this is not the right thing, mm -hmm. this is not the right news, whatever. But their reach is very limited. My only concern is that once anything comes on the WhatsApp, and we have seen how it happens in the Jharkhand, that was that I feel that that was just the testing point that you just put that these are the people who are going to come to take away your children or something something like this and there's a lynching so what I find that now this challenge of the fake news is thousand times bigger than the paid news because they are instigating into a mob lynching right now this fake news and one side the fake news is there and the other side the hate mongers are there or the people who are just openly coming and challenging the whole constitutional network of this country. So there is a threat from all sides, what do you find? So how we are going to uh, counter this, this is the biggest question right now for every person who loves in this country, who loves the diversity of this country, who has faith in the constitution and the democracy. So I think all those people who want to protect this democracy, which is our democracy, the biggest danger is that fascist forces they unleash the attack from multiple sides. They just don't come, one fake news, one WhatsApp, one Ravi Shankar, one Ram Dev. No. They will all come from the different fields and they basically want to kill the diversity, kill the freedom of speech because they are so much afraid that the people are speaking truth. Otherwise, why there is a need to kill Gauri Lankesh? There is no need of killing Gauri Lankesh and then all the rationalists hmm. because they find that there are still people who are not afraid of them. I was in Gujarat and I was feeling pain about this. So many people were there during the election. Hmm. Uh, people from the minority are saying that, okay, nobody wants to talk about us. Nobody wants to talk about 2002 genocide because then they, will, they are afraid that this will uh, have a different kind of Hindu mobilization. Right. Everybody wants to become a Udar Hindu. Hmm. They will say, I am a Hindu. Yeah. Okay, I'm not that kind of Hindu, but I am a Hindu. Hindu. Why? Why we are not in a condition to say that I'm an atheist or no, even you don't say you are atheist. Why so you can't right. say that I'm an Indian? I'm a citizen of this country. Right. I have given a right by the constitution. But you will find that right now, that kind of a discourse that main political party, opposition party also feels threatened that if they have much more Muslim candidates, then what is going to happen? So this kind of a political uh, right wing shift as it has happened in the economy, right. with the economy disto uh, discourse in the 90s where that has happened, when the whole liberalization yeah. started in coming to India. So if you want to talk about the, uh, if you are a progressive, you have to talk about the growth, you have to talk about the GDP growth. Yeah. All that kind of right-wing economic shift has happened from that 90 onwards. And same with the growth of the Modi and the RSS and the Bhagwa Brigade. Now you will find that there is a right-wing shift to the political uh, diction. diction. Okay. We are living in a very diffi uh, difficult and uh, different times. So we have to build our strategy also if we want to save the media, save the constitution, then we have to uh, build up and uh, make uh, the space for the marginalized and the real issues, life, till we take our breath, I think. Uh, that's it. S journalist Basha Singh says that multiple ways we are being attacked, but she also says that from different angles, if people come together and have the agenda of the marginalized and their issues being talked about, democracy can be strengthened and maybe we can pose a challenge to the right-wing forces. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.